Okay, so in the last video we implemented our diffuse lighting pass. In this video I'd like us to implement our diffuse shadows pass. Now to generate the shadow pass for our diffuse lighting we're going to use a method that's called ambient occlusion and from now on I'm actually going to refer to our diffuse shadows pass simply as the ambient occlusion or AO pass. Now our shadows really if we think about them they're just parts of the surface that aren't receiving light from our environment and that's because they're occluded by other surfaces. So this idea of one surface occluding another surface from an environmental light source is exactly how ambient occlusion works. In very basic terms we can think of it like this, that for every pixel that we're rendering we determine the surface normal for that point being rendered and we see how clearly that point in space can see the environment in the direction of its surface normal. So let's draw out a very simple scene real quick. So I'm going to bring up a new layer. Grab the brush. So let's draw out a very simple scene. So let's say we've got a ground plane and a sphere. And then let's say that we've got a cylinder over here. And then imagine that we've got our environment going around. So let's say I'm rendering a point on that sphere and let's say that that point is very closely surrounded by other surfaces or other parts of the same surface in the direction of its surface normal for example underneath the sphere then that point is going to be rendered very dark if not black because it's closely surrounded it can't see the environment very well however if we're rendering a point that can see the environment nice and clearly no one is occluding that surface normal to the environment then that gets rendered with a white color with a bright color and then if we had something that was partially occluded but not fully occluded maybe you know on the side here or where we're hitting the ground but it's not very close to the ground these would be shades of gray so we're going to generate at the end result a grayscale image which determines in terms of that grayscale value how occluded the point of that surface is from the environment and this is really useful to us because we can multiply it in with our diffuse lighting pass because effectively this is just now a shadow pass we have areas that don't see the environment very clearly are getting shaded black and areas that do see the environment thus need the diffuse lighting are being shaded white and we already discussed if we have a grayscale image and we multiply it in with our lighting the areas that are dark are going to darken the lighting the areas that are white are going to leave the lighting however the lighting was previously so we can multiply those two passes and that will combine the light and the shadows now hopefully it's apparent that ambient occlusion is a global method or what is referred to as a global method in as much as all objects in our scene are going to affect the results of the calculations and um, obviously one object in relation to all the other objects in the scene is going to affect how occluded it is from an environment and therefore in a more complicated project we've got to be really careful when we render our ambient occlusion pass to ensure that the correct objects are visible in the scene for those calculations even if they're not visible in the render they do need to take part in the calculations in order to get the correct results for example if we wanted the teapot in our very basic scene to be in its own layer and then we set the floor visibility to off the floor wouldn't shadow the teapot in the ambient occlusion calculations there's actually a very simple shader that we can use in mantra to make an object invisible in terms of final render but visible for ray tracing for shadowing and the likes that is the vex matte shader and we'll take a look at that right at the very end of this dvd when we look at a very sort of basic scene that has used our shader for some photo real rendering but uh, for now we're simply dealing with the ambient occlusion portion as opposed to the management of scenes and it may seem like ambient occlusion is a very complicated algorithm to implement thankfully if we're dealing in mantra houdini provides us with an occlusion vop for calculating ambient occlusion when we are rendering with mantra and that wraps up all of the functionality we need into a single node now this node by the very nature of how ambient occlusion is calculated does use ray tracing which we obviously know is computationally expensive
However, in this case, we really can't avoid ray tracing, and it's generally considered acceptable to use ray tracing for calculating ambient occlusion, even if general, we try and avoid ray tracing due to its slower computations. So this is really an overview of how we're going to be using ambient occlusion, or more, more really, what ambient occlusion even is, and then we can jump over into Houdini now and implement our ambient occlusion pass. And that's going to be as simple as creating an occlusion VOP, setting up some parameters on that VOP, and outputting its output into the color output of our shader. So let's jump over into Houdini. Let's set ourselves back to looking through the camera. And I'm going to jump inside our shader. Fantastic. And I'm going to create a new occlusion VOP which I'm going to rename to AO for ambient occlusion. And for now, I'm simply going to wire the output of the ambient occlusion into the color F input of output one. So that means that we're not going to be calculating diffuse lighting. We're simply calculating ambient occlusion. Later in the DVD, we'll deal with how we're going to work with multiple render passes. For now, I'm simply going to override the original render pass and simply deal with our ambient occlusion. Now, the inputs, the important inputs, are the position of the point we're rendering and the normal of the point we're rendering. And by default, that's actually being taken care of automatically. We haven't wired those two inputs in, which means our global position and normal coming in from the global variables is going to be used for us. And that's exactly the behavior that we want. We want to use the position and surface normal of the point that's being rendered to calculate our ambient occlusion. Now, if we were to fire off a test render right now, I'm not going to let this run completely, but if we were to fire off a test render right now, we actually see, if we give this a chance to start working, we'd actually see a couple of things. The first is that it's going to be completely black. The second is it's a very slow render right now. So I'm actually going to escape to cancel this since I know that the entire image is going to be black. And the reason that image is black is because our background color is set to black. And what we're basically telling the occlusion VOP is that our environment consists of a black environment. Therefore, if we can see the environment, well, what are we seeing? We're seeing black. And if we can't see the environment, we're getting shaded black. That means everyone's getting shaded black. What we need is our background color to be a value of white, of 111, so that if we see the environment, we get shaded white. Now, notice our render was really slow. That's because our number of samples is very high. So we can, just as we were dealing with with our environment light, we can decrease the number of samples to speed up our render at the cost of more noise in the final render. And just like the environment light, I don't mind a little bit of noise because it looks like film grain. So I'm going to set this to 64 samples. I feel this personally works well. Feel free to uh, experiment with the value on your own if you want to come up with a value that you like working with. Let's take a very quick look, just real quick, at the other parameters before we fire off another render. We've got the bias, and this deals with a way of basically helping to alleviate self-shadowing artifacts. Um, it's a bit like the bias on depth map shadows. You can kind of think of it like that. We have the maximum ray distance. This is how far the ray is allowed to travel, and minus one says infinity. So our ray is allowed to travel forever before it could possibly intersect an object and determine whether or not we have occlusion or not. The object scope, object selection, that's dealing with which objects are used in the calculation. This is another way, as opposed to using the um, VEX matte shader, as we discussed earlier, it's another way of specifying exactly which objects we want to have in this particular ambient occlusion calculation. The environment map we're going to be coming back to later is actually going to be useful to us, allows us to use an HDRI environment for specifying the background color, not just a white background color. And finally, the environment object allows us to specify a transform space that those map calculations take place in. But for now, we only really need to worry about the samples and the background color. We can jump back over into our scene, fire off another render. And this will give us our ambient occlusion pass. So let's just give this a second to render. So just waiting for Houdini to render. And we're going to see in this pass that we have, as we were expecting, surfaces that are 
closer together, thus occluding one another, are going to be shaded dark. And surfaces that are open, that are exposed to the environment, are going to be shaded lighter. Now, they're not necessarily shaded the right tone of grey that we want for our lighting. And the beauty, again, of rendering this in passes is that we can take this pass and we can manipulate it in compositing to get the exact range of black through white that we want before multiplying it in with our lighting. We're also going to notice we're actually going to be combining this and the lighting pass in the next video. And we're going to notice that uh, these shadows aren't exactly how we want them. As we mentioned, uh, I believe in the overview video, we mentioned that the shadows aren't exactly how we'd like them to behave and that's actually going to affect the passes that we have so that instead of having just three passes for our diffuse lighting we're going to end up with more than three passes but for now this is our ambient occlusion pass so let's save this out and I'm going to save this to S project HDRI shader and this is going to be AO.pick and in the next video we'll go ahead and combine this back with the diffuse lighting talk about why this isn't exactly how we want the shadows to work talk about and implement the solution to how we want the shadows to work and then at that point we can finally discuss the importance of the passes that we're going to have because they are going to differ very slightly from these passes and how those passes are used in a final composite and what their sort of features and what control they give, which I know we really overlooked earlier. There's a reason for overlooking it, and that's that the passes aren't going to quite work out like these passes. So that is going to conclude this video. Thanks a lot, everyone.